Okay, welcome back. Welcome to the start of a new anime review series. This is Banished from the Hero Party. I decided to live a life, a quiet life in the countryside. That's the full name of the series. I'm calling this one Banished from the Hero Party. Yes, this one basically is another new anime, even though I just finished up, basically finished up watching World's Fine Assassin. Excuse me. That will be added to my interview schedule starting next week with the newest episode, which is going to be episode 11. This one, I'm basically kind of similar I did with World's Fine Assassin and some other anime. I'm discussing basically the first two episodes of this anime. So far, this anime has released a total number of about 10 episodes so far. And the first seven have been dubbed in English. So, basically, whenever I run out of dub episodes, that's when I'll pretty much, in a way, like, switch over the sub. Yeah, that's simple. what's going to happen there. Mm hmm Yep. Now, in the case of these two episodes, we're covering they're covering basically the first two chapters of book one. Now, the whole thing about Banish and Hero Party, they kind of explain this in a flashback. The main character, whose name is Red, his real name is actually Gideon. Yes, seriously, it's his, it's his real name. Where he is banished to Hero Party for according to their Sage, who basically is a son of a fallen duke, who is also a jerk, by the way, for being a liability. That's his words, not mine. Yep. And then, of course, as soon as he basically decides to leave, he tells him to leave his equipment there and take only the sword and clothes on his back. I'm like, really? You don't allow him to keep his own damn equipment? Yes, in case you're curious, though, did this happen in the book? Yes, I was not a fan of this at all. The fact that this this guy Ares is nothing more than a big jerk. So, we're introduced to a few new characters. Now, Gideon himself does have a sister, Ruti, a beautiful blue-haired woman who is voiced by Telly Blatt, uh, Ballard. In case you're curious, though, who does voice the main character of Banished from the Hero Party? The actor's name is Aaron Campbell. We also have a love interest named Rit. You see her briefly appearing in episode one, though she actually has a full, much more full appearance in episode two. She's voiced by Danny Chambers. Mm hmm. Yep. And we're introduced to a couple other characters. Now, Ares is voiced by Brandon McKeithis. This is the guy who banished him from the hero party. There are a few others. There's also Tessa Garland. She she makes her first appearance toward the end of basically episode two, and she's voiced by the awesome Jad Saxton. Mm-hmm. Yep, this character is an assassin. Now each of the characters have got their own particular divine blessing. The main character is a guide, while in the case is beautiful little sister, she's the hero. Ares is a sage. There's also a martial arts expert. Yeah, so pretty much when Red left the party, he took an alias. Yes, he took an alias. As far as the point I thought the studio who made this, it's called Wolfsbane. The company only started a few years ago, and here's a little fun fact for you about this, this company. This is only the second show they ever made. Yeah, first one they made was Peter, Gr uh, Peter Grill and the Philosopher's Time. It's a harem anime. I never watched it, per se. Oddly enough, it is... It's it is in English. I haven't watched it yet. I might watch it in the future. It's possible. Mm hmm Yeah. Because I like this type of stuff. Mm-hmm. Yep. So mostly put basically what happens over the course of these two episodes. We have Red, we basically just hang up this sound named Zorin. And we have this guy we basically have him just gathering herbs. Yeah, you could kind of think of him as very similar to the main character from 
drugstore in the world. As a matter of fact, he pretty much wants to open an apachery, aka a, dr- a pharmacy. That's simply put basically what he wants to do. Make potions. I'm like, okay. So he got his herbs. And of course, he also covers his creature known as a a a owl bear. Yes, seriously. That's what this creature is called. An owl bear. Pretty much what this creature is, it's a bear with an owl's head. <laughs> yeah. So I also point out that he's sort of in a way a he's basically a survivalist. He also is able to avoid certain confrontations. That's pretty much his personality. And he does that just by the fact he's an adventurer, he does not want to go beyond a D rank. Now the character Albert himself basically is presented at first in the anime as sort of a jerk because he's a B rank adventurer. Yes, a B rank adventurer. Yeah, just because he's a higher rank than he is, he tends to basically disrespect him and have basically demand respect. You ever heard the phrase, respect is earned, not dem- not gained. Not demanded. Pfft, I guess this guy didn't do it. Basically, he wanted to hire Red to be a guy to help him look for this particular creature. He turns him down. So, he basically goes to the mountains. And then, of course, like, when he's at home, he, of course, the flashback basically kicked out the party. Then, of course, his, a friend of his basically stops by a guy named Tarty. Yeah, where they mentioned he basically he really wants to build his own shop, shop for him, which he does at the end of the first episode. Actually, he does in episode two. So, pretty much, basically, he decides to <laughs> like he because his 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 nephew is sick. So basically, he asks Red to go and go look for these particular look for particular blood this particular herb, and. For some reason, the mountains are declared off limits. They don't really explain the anime exactly why, but he's able to sneak back and sneak over the wall, and he's able to get the herb. Not much a problem, despite the fact that the forest, basically the area where it's supposed to be growing, was 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 basically set ablaze. For some reason, probably somebody in Albert's group, and the guide, yeah, he's demanding a big payment. Yeah, this basically is a sharp contrast for Al- for Albert at the B rank adventurer, where at first he's a jerk, he basically demanding respect, and then all of a sudden, basically, he's probably agrees to pay the guy, but he probably he notices the slash mark on, because Gideon does slash at the bear, the the owl bear, you know, says, hmm, what's up with the slash mark? And he doesn't really investigate. Well, not at first, anyway. So explore a little later. Yes, there's some interesting stuff that happens in the book. I won't get to it right now, but I'll, have, I'll explain a little bit later when it comes to books. So, pretty much after basically this kid say we see a new adventure, Red show up. We don't see her face, mind you. Not until the very next episode. Nope, not until the very next episode. And her outfit is simply put basically like a, a regular female Avengers garb. Basically, with like a skirt, and she's got like twin, almost like twin pistols. Basically, almost like a twin swords. It's basically her style, and she gets paid really well. And of course, because as a reward for saving the, his, his friend's nephew, he's a uh, a pottery, no problem. Basically, he's able to build his, his shop for free as as a reward. So he celebrates the fact that he things opened, and then of course we actually have. Where Rit basically kind of explains her story with him, where they first met at, get this, a bar. Yes, she was she was basically in disguise. Now, in case you're curious, though, does this happen in real life? Do, do men meet women at bars? As a matter of fact, yes, this actually is something that does happen in real life, from what I've heard. Yes, this is a very common occurrence. Where guys usually meet women in bars. And it does have a fiction. It's a very common fiction trope. And it's a common trope in real life. But they don't fall in love per se. No, no, no. That's not happen a little bit later. 
So instead of talking to, let's say, the, the hero, which is basically Red Sister, who is Ruti. Nope, it's actually just... She talks to Red. And, of course, they deal with a potential invasion from, from a... Excuse me, these group of orcs. And... The orcs basically, they're some of these people were, of course, they she, she basically have a plan to raid a fortress for food and supplies, which sounds like a pretty reasonable plan. To have basically the royal guard distract the main force while they go raid this fortress, which that actually sounds pretty interesting. And the other guys, basically, the other guys are there, think they think the plan is very useful. And then, of course, the guy who's the captain of the guard is like, that's a pretty good idea, go ahead and do it. And the adventurers who go with her all get killed by her master. Who turns out this actually is not her master, but a monster disguise. And basically, Red shows up to help her out, distract him long enough, very briefly, mind you, just so Ruti can show up, basically slices monster to pieces. Basically, it's a, it's a six-armed monster. And then, of course, we act as the princess in a different outfit in the very next day, where... Basically, Red cheers her up, and they, of course, lead stuff into actual battle. Yep. And shows up the fact that he's actually a really good cook in the flashback. And then by the end of the episode, she says she's going to live with Red. Yep. Which this this leads to some stuff quite interesting happens a little bit later on. Oh, don't worry about that. Gotta say, for the start of the series, it's actually pretty good. I... I'm thoroughly enjoying this, and tomorrow I will discuss the remaining three episodes of basically Death Book 1 for the series. Yes, spot right online. The first book is covered for the first five episodes, which, that's actually pretty standard for a lot of anime adaptations for basically adapting the first book. Like, the least I've seen is maybe three episodes. That's the least I've seen for adapting one book. But, four or five is perfectly standard. But still, longest today is Wolf's Finest Assassin. Having one book cover 10 episodes. Though, still hasn't finished that, but not one yet. Yep. So, yes, that's it for Sick Love You. Stay tuned for my reviews tomorrow. Uh, I was, I guess it's Thursday, probably think, oh, what about Shaman King? You forgot about your Shaman King. I'm going to take care of that tomorrow. The reason why this is coming so late was because I was watching AEW Dynamite. Yes, I did watch it good episode yeah it has a very similar thing happen during the episode where we had Trent Beretta come back and he comes back riding in his mom's minivan and of course Excalibur oh. proclaiming oh yeah Sue is the most over mom in professional wrestling which I found to be so hilarious yes that that scene basically him coming out basically beat the crap out of the of the, of the super click is so awesome well, apparently he's jacked now. Yes, Trent Barrett is jacked. And he also shaved his head. I remember when he was part of the Dude Busters. <laughs> this was years ago. I can go I can go on for a while talking about the this most recent episode of Dynamite, which actually was pretty fun. Heck, even the most recent women's match in the episode is actually pretty good. Yep. So yeah, that's it for of you. Stay tuned for tomorrow. I'll discuss the many episodes for the series. Based, I'm going to discuss for the moment, basically the first five. And also, Shaman King... And maybe something else. Okay? Next video. Bye.